it could easily have gotten a way harsher charge if people actually died. What up, guys? This is your favorite beer podcast, Town Logger, coming to yours. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, doing? sir. What's up? What's up? <laughs> yeah, we're me and me and Stad. We're we're doing this star Stad Logger podcast as a way to like we rate beers and talk about new topics that come to our minds. So yeah. So why is today? Why is today so special, uh, Stout? So today, for today's episode, we're doing um, a little bit of an interesting idea where we just have a bunch of beers from a bunch of different places. So I have some well, beers from, you know, Europe, Africa, Asia, just kind of trying the, the different beers of the world. Yeah, like a uh, beer world tour. <laughs> I'm going to crack Come mine open. That. Yeah. Uh, the mic. Cheers, it, cheers. Cheers. This is... Oh, we we started with Europe. Now I gotta say that we we have Europe and Asia, but we are differing in. I took uh, South America and Australia technically, but we'll see about that. And then you took uh, was Africa and the Middle East. Yes. Yeah, and we're trying to probably do four each. So we'll 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 see, we'll see where goes. the episode takes us. So you for your Europe beer, uh, Stad, well, what did you get? I am starting with the Estrella Galicia. That's Galicia, like okay. like a Spaniard, you know? It's a Spanish beer. Oh, dude. <laughs> that sounds good. I starting with the Cronenberg. That's the name of the brewery. 1964. And it's like their, I believe, lager of it. So it's definitely it's, it smells like lager. You know what it smells like? It cool. smells like a Bud Light. That's and funny. I know that sounds like an insult, but it's more like... Okay, this this is like their, you know, golden lager kind of, you know, smell. But anyway, I'm drinking my first sip. I'm first serious, sip? <laughs> it's kind of tastes like a Heineken. I don't know if I'm tripping. Whoa. I don't know. I haven't had a hurricane in a while, though. Yo, this is like a sweet Bud Light. What the hell? Oh my gosh. This is crazy. So why is it... How would you describe Heineken, though? Or Heineken? Because it's been a while since I drank a Heineken, to be honest. I don't know. Let me see. Let's, oh, what the heck? What? This is Puerto Rico on the back. I mean, you did say very Puerto Rican <laughs> when you when you said Estrella or vosotros. Uh, um, I don't know. It's pretty light. Yeah. Uh, the description says it's golden color, clean and bright, lighty floral, herbal flavors with a moderate warm mouthfeel, an intense hoppy bitter taste that lingers in the mouth. I think it tastes exactly that. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Man, I I think I think it's like like a more bitter lager. I feel like, uh, for me, for the uh, yeah, I think mine mine definitely has a a lot more of a bitter taste than I'm used to with lagers, as well. Maybe I wonder why I wonder why that that is for a lot of these things. Yes, yeah, a European pale lager. Man, that's crazy though. I'm like I'm liking the the Cronenberg though. Ah, uh, so what would you know? Taking some time to drink this. Um, this is our ketchup style. What did you yes, end up sir, doing yes, this sir. last week? Um, so yeah. last Tuesday, um, it was a really nice day. Um, so when Sarah came home, we rode the bus and we went to ro- go drink a bunch of breweries. So we went brewery hopping. Um, oh, brewery hopping. Yeah, okay. do you, you know the the place that we we took you to. Mm. Where we got food, and we went to a bunch yeah. of breweries with, oh, well, with, the, with the people that were here. Maybe. Oh, that place. Yeah. We were doing like a a. We were walking around and stuff. Like a brewery, hopping, mm-hmm. brewery hopping. Yeah, we went there again. Okay, yeah. What new what what new beers did you taste over there? 
Um, so we had some sours. I tried a um an oak aged stout that was like sixteen percent. That was terrifying and like I don't know. I just saw one stout on the menu and I'm like, I'm gonna get that. And then I saw it and I was like, oh god. And oh, just that, tasted, oh like, that's the one that you sent me. Yeah, I sent okay. you a picture of that one. Oh, I was freaking. I I know it was a little ambiguous at first. I sent a picture of it. Forgot to say yeah. that I'm you it, know why I sent it. Like this is a sixty percent, sixty percent. Yeah, no, you definitely didn't tell me that. <laughs> yeah, it was just well, a really awesome. strong like tasting, and it tasted like the oak oak aged a lot. Oak, okay. Yeah. What did a uh, sour get? Maybe so we like, went. What, what specific sours? Did she she get? got in the first place. She got some sours. Um, I don't remember what she had. She had one that was like a mimosa kind of. She had one that had, tasted like tea. One that was like mango. It was just a bunch of like fruity, fruity sours. And then the second place, fruity when sours. I got the stout, she got a a Belgian ale because she she thought it tasted like Blue Moon and it didn't. Which was it didn't, disappointing was for she, her, but was disappointing. Oh my god! Yeah, gosh. yeah, I was like, <laughs> that's yeah, funny. It makes sense. I feel like the the more craft Belgian ales or Belgian whites or whatever mm-hmm. Blue Moon is yeah. probably just tastes more yeah. craft. Tastes more like beer. Yeah, they're more of the like the. I feel like I, I, you gotta admit, like I feel like Belgian people just have they use the toughest nails. You know, I feel like in their mouth. <laughs> yeah. I don't know taste buds. Yeah, dude. Like, uh, like compared to the beers that we get normally, like I think it's just a European like thing. Belgian stuff. Yeah, dude. European know, they European know how to drink beer, or like I don't know, they just used to it. Cause like I know in America, in South America, like like the Latin places, I know people drink young, or like you know they're like there's no real strict laws about drinking, so they do end up drinking beers or may or they go more liquor. But the beers over there are very lighter. I feel like we'll we'll we'll, we'll see. But like, yeah, I've I've heard that then, like in like England or like the UK that like you could have a beer with like a plate of food at pubs for like kids. Then like you just have a <laughs> pint, which is kind of crazy. I don't know how true that is, but yeah, I think. I mean, I I know the drinking age is eighteen, probably. I think over there. Yeah, I think in England, because there's this funny story with like um Jaden Jaden Smith. And Will Smith, uh, I, it was one of the because sometimes I watch interview videos of celebrities because I don't know they're kind of funny when they're not acting and they're just doing that. And, it, and then Will Smith does tell us a story about how Jaden convinced him to to them to go to England for some reason, or maybe it was Canada, but I think it was England. And he goes and he goes to Jaden goes to order a a beer, and he is like eighteen or nineteen or something like that. And Will Smith was like, what are you doing? Like, you're not drinking. And then, and like, but that, like, the drinking age here is 18. <laughs> I can do it whatever I want. Damn. <laughs> and it's kind of funny. Sent his ass back on a, tri- on a fucking plane by himself. <laughs> it, the thing is, like, that's like the rich people manner of, like, what we did. Or I know I did. I drove to Canada when I was 20. Mm-hmm. To go drinking, like before I was twenty one. Yeah. And so I know I know you did it too for I think. Yeah, we we there. we went there. It was pretty funny when we went. We went on the Fourth of July weekend because we were there for an internship. So we went and drove over, and the border the border agent or like the the border patrol person was like, "So you're you're celebrating your nation's independence by coming to Canada?" <laughs> we we're like, "Yep, that's pretty much yep. it." To, yeah. to, to, to be fair, they're, they're talking to like the more the less patri- patriotic people ever. You know, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> he was talking to immigrants. <laughs> I so, mean, I don't really do anything for Fourth of July. The most I do is like make a grill and just chill with yeah. family and fireworks. Yeah. Yeah, drink beer, eat. Pretty much. That's it. I, hey, you're doing like all of it just in a different country. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I feel that. I, I, how was that trip to Canada? It was fun. That was um so I went to Canada twice that internship. The first time I went um for that, the fourth of July. And it was more of the chill trip. You know, we went to um I guess it doesn't matter. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um we went to Maybe I don't think, the name. I don't remember where exactly we went, but we drove up and we didn't go super w- far in. Because the well, second yeah. time we went we went to Toronto, which is a lot deeper okay. in. 
So I think yeah, well, the that's first what time, I did too. the first time we went, we just like crossed the border and just like had found the hotel and just kind of explored the the area. Ah, uh, really? So, yeah, this was. I mean, this was like the first time that we were drinking though. So we went to we went to the store. Well, officially or like legally. Yeah, yeah like right? buying stuff. So when we went in, we were like, "What are we gonna get?" We had no clue. We didn't really want to get like a bottle because we weren't like that hard like drinking at that point like to have a bottle in a day because i think yeah. we were there for like maybe friday saturday something like that yeah. um so we ended up getting like cans so we got like three or four cans and there were the i think it was one of them was like a smirnoff can just like like those types of it wasn't like beer it was like the like seltzer slash like those types of drinks and we got like three or four of them and we went back when we were drinking them i think we drank like one each and one, half of one together. And it was just so carbonated and filling that, like, we just didn't, we didn't even finish it. Really? Yeah. And, and, we and didn't we, really when you say, when you say we, it was just you and Sour. Yeah, yeah it was, it was uh, me and Sour for that trip. So that really? one was, okay. was more low key. We just, you know, we went, we did the, you know, go to, I think, cause we were like, our hotel was like by like a pier. So it's like boardwalk area where you can like walk along the, the coast of the water. And I think on That's the other nice. side, it was this United States. So we sat there, we, we had some dinner, we had like a drink. I think I had a Long Island and Sour had a margarita or something like that. And then nice. had some food and then we went back to the, the hotel and did that. But yeah, it was a little more chill. The second time was crazy. That was, that was the, you, the partying time that we went. And you went this with uh, some of the, your friends from internships, right? Yeah, I went with Sour's coworkers. So coworkers. My, okay. that internship, my, my group was like chill. And then like the last like month... Or like the last like two to three weeks of my internship, I met the people like like my friend group started hanging out outside of work. So right. I was like closer to the end. But that's like from the beginning, Sour's group was always doing stuff. So we went to when we went to Canada, we stayed at like um, Toronto in like the international district. Uh, so we had a lot of like Asian food. We had dim sum. We had a hot pot. Ooh. We had a bunch of different like things trying it. Um, and nice. then we went clubbing a lot, too. And I remember by by our Airbnb there was an, a McDonald's, um, and our our drunk asses walking back, walk like it was it was crazy it was a blur just walking back we blur. walk back, and we go to McDonald's we got we got the the, the you know the chicken nuggets uh, McDouble and some fries, it, it it saved my life woke up the next it day saved a, your lot, life a lot better this, uh... than that I than I would have if I didn't have that. Nice. And during this time, <laughs> yeah. I from so that's funny because like literally, I guess it was a year before that. Then for me, mm-hmm. I went to because because I guess to let the viewers know, ironic. Uh, actually, we had the, the same kind of like internship in our sophomore years. I guess or was yes, it were... right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I should say the company, but I think people are. Yeah, people who who listen know, they're like, and anyway, anyway, the internship was in Detroit. I, I would just say that, right? Because yeah. that's where the border is here. Yeah, and I know in my summer I went to Toronto. We, I didn't really do the that that town over the bridge, mm-hmm. and I I go, I'm I'm the one driving. I'm driving my roommate, uh, my roommate and our friend, who is a girl. And I'm driving our, damn it, I don't know, it is rental that I bought for the, for the summer. So somehow with the company, they let me able to rent this car at 20 years old, which is like crazy. Anyway, I, I, I drove, I drove, and one thing, oh no, that was like going back, going there. And we, we went there to drink, we go there, we drink, uh, we, we bought Airbnb. And we meet, and Michelle. Uh, well, I'll say Michelle and Alfie. Alfie's a gay guy. He, they used me as fishing bait, I guess, for guys. And they would send me out to a group of guys to talk to people, to talk to them, and then bring them in. And it was kind of funny because like they sent me to the first group of people, and that's when I first drank a Jaeger bomb. Damn. And yeah, like, cause like, I got, I got, I got along with the guy. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I know. I, 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 I got along with the guys. Like, hey, guys, I'm new. This is my first time in Canada. I'm 20 years old. Blah blah. 
And 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 like, you ever had a Gary bomb? I'm like, no, never. Here, let's do it together, blah blah. blah. And yeah, I was like, I know. It's, but then after that, um. It was the best Jager bomb I've ever tasted, by the way. Like you, I didn't taste a Jager at that time ever. Uh, so those are dangerous. But um, then they took me back because they didn't like that group or they didn't like the guys. I don't know. Then they sent me back to, to this other group of these two guys and this one girl. They sent me there, talked to them. And so, so, so Michelle said in the beginning of the night that um, no matter what, don't let me go back to Airbnb with a guy. That's what she said in the, in the beginning of the night. And anyway, she meets this guy this, of the second group. We all do shots together. We just, we all essentially join together. And we all do shots. And then, and then Michelle goes, give me the keys to the Airbnb. And to like Alfie. And he's like, wait, are you sure? Because you just told us to not let you. <laughs> and I don't know. We're like, all right, whatever. There you go. And we gave her the key. She goes home with the guy. And me and Alfie, we go to a gay bar. Because he'd never gone to a gay bar before. So we go. I get, I get lost. Like, and then we somehow find each other. And then we go back to their Airbnb. Find them there, Michelle and the, and the guy. And, and uh, what you call it? And they break, they essentially break the door of the shower. That's tough. Yeah, and I didn't find out until the morning after. And it was like, or, or I, no, I never really found out because I didn't really know it was broken when I took it in my shower. But then I get a message from the Airbnb and like saying, hey, the, this thing is broken. It's like, oh, what? Thing. And I was like, and because it was, I was the one to pay for the Airbnb. Damn. You get caught lacking okay. with that? Thankfully, apparently, he, she was able to replace it, the, mm-hmm. the Airbnb person. So she didn't charge me extra for it. So it was just like dodge, bullet dodge. But oh my God. It was like, that's rough. people are wilding, you know? People get rough. Yeah, man. That's freaking But I know, but, uh, it's a good story though. Like Toronto was fun. Like it's a clean city. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I think Toronto is my favorite place that I've been in Canada. I mean, I, I, I mean, and you you've been to Vancouver though, right? Yeah, I've been to Vancouver, okay. been to Toronto, and I was to that like a smaller city. Smaller city. Well, yeah. Vancouver Toronto's did nice, not compare yeah. to Toronto at all. To be fair, also we we went to Toronto during summer. I bet like that's like the best time to go. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like Vancouver was significantly smaller, and there wasn't as much to do. Like I don't know, I yeah. feel like there was like maybe a street <laughs> where there's like a bunch of stuff, like bars, restaurants, and stuff. Yeah. But like aside from that, there's not really that much. Whereas like Toronto was huge. We we when we were in the we were just in the international district, I think. Yeah. And we, we had so much stuff to do. We did not run out of stuff. And I'm sure there was more more places we could have gone to as well. Yeah. And we're back with another beer. Beer number two. This is a <laughs> fucking big beer. I know. Mine, mine is not so big because it is still 12 ounce, but God, it feels heavier. Motherfucker. Like, you have a 12 ounce? I have a... 16. Bro, I almost have a 750. 640 milliliters. One pint and five ounces. Okay, that's a pint. And a pint is what? Double 12 ounce? Or I, don't know. I think. I don't know. I honestly don't know. This one's probably like two beers low key. We'll see low how this key. goes. But, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, number two. Beer number two for me is Sing Sao. I'm probably saying that horribly wrong, but it's yeah, a Chinese disclaimer. lager. What is it called? Sorry. Sing Sao. It's T T S I N G T A O. Ching Tao. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. What are you sipping on? Yeah, yeah, disclaimer, we're we're two boys from that are Latinos. We probably are going to mispronounce a lot of things for you. Dude, these all smell like Heineken. I don't know. I feel like everyone's smelling like Heineken to you. But anyway, I got I got Bia Saigon export and it's like from Vietnamese. Nice. Vietnamese beer. So we're, right now we're hitting up Asia on our tour. Yes, sir. 
So it's a bug. For beer number two. Or for beer number one. Um, oh, yeah. Let me open this first. What's, what's, I your, rating? what's your rating? Ah, oh, this. There it is. So okay. for me, I guess I have the Estrella Galicia. Galicia? Or Estrella Galicia, you know, how the Spain you say. It, but um, it was a lager. Wow. It's pretty good. Um, I think it was a beer that I would get at a beer. At a bar. Not going to lie. A beer. <laughs> a beer that beer I get at a beer. beer. Yes, sir. <laughs> but um, I definitely probably would get that again if I saw it. Um, oh, yeah. I'm gonna. I, I'm leaning right now to seven point five. Barcelona's out of ten. Barcelona's. You know? FC Let's Barcelona. Say Barca. Barca. But um. But what? So what did it taste like? It just literally tasted like a light beer. A light beer. So it's it, refreshing. It tasted, like, least, it tasted yeah. like more of like a lager. It, yeah. it was a pale ale, I think. I'm not sure what it was yeah. actually, but it tasted like a lager with hop to it but it wasn't too much of hop yeah i think yeah okay 7.5 that's a good rating uh i guess for me uh i got the cronenberg 1664 i guess well do you want to say any facts about estrella so So i guess (laughs) more so about spanish Spanish beers. beers yeah I was looking it up, and apparently they like let light lagers, pilsners, and also alcohol-free beer. That's something that I saw when I was looking it up, that there's a lot of Spaniard alcohol-free beer. It's pretty cool. I wonder, yeah, I wonder why there's a push for that. Like, Because I know I was looking through the beers for this episode, and I did find it's called Dram- Dauma, Daura, which is like Estrella, I think, gluten-free beer. And... I mean, and it's kind of interesting that's the push for it. Maybe it's, I don't know. They it's just want cool. as light as possible or be as healthy as possible, which mm-hmm. good for them, man. Yeah, live forever. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that, that one was, it said that it seems like they, they kind of have a lot of the, the Izakaya vibes. They got, you know, the Spaniard tapas are pretty popular. It says oh, that a lot true. of them, they pair a lot of their beers with the tapas. Yeah, um, it's like, because I, I, I guess light. Light to like lager beers, they're, they're very much really good for like those uh pasapalos or like you know, uh, tapas, you know, mm-hmm. small foods, fit yeah. foods on steaks and stuff. So that's yeah. good, all right. So for me, I got the Cronenberg 1664. Mm-hmm. And before I give the rating, I kind of want to give go over some of the fun facts about it because it's kind of the more I read about their its history, it's actually really. Funny. Mm-hmm. So it's a brewery that was founded in six, 1664 by Geronimus Ger- Ger- Hatt um, in what today is Stroudsburg, France. And the thing about French beer I've been, I saw, I've been seeing, is that it was, it was, it was, it was affected a lot by... Because before industrialization, a lot of the beers were brewed in rural breweries in France. Like, mm-hmm. it was, like, catered to the needs of the local residents. Like, so, essentially, just ba- they're very traditional. They're very, like, different flavors. But because of industrialization that was happening, I think it was 1800s, or I think it was around there, the, r- the rural population declined, so these breweries almost disappeared. Mm-hmm. Like and along this along with the Cronenberg brewery, so industrialization impacted the number of breweries, the decline of the coal mining, you know, uh, almost made this breweries disappear. Also, the two world wars really hit the French countryside hard, so there was like a very much a low percentage of beers be made in France because of, because of those factors. and But in the last decades, there was a lot of microbreweries that, that came to appear. And especially Kernberg, because it was in a... Because you heard that Berg, right? Mm-hmm. Name? And it's because all of that were in the countryside of France that was fought over from Germany. Like It became Germany, then it became France. It was, just, it was all this, you know, warring that like happened and it was kind of crazy with with that and then you know it was this the one that we i'm drinking right now was just first brewed in 1952 
despite this brewery really being from the night from 1664, which is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, it's like it has a lot of malt. So well, or it has the 1900s. 16, 1664 was when they were founded. Okay. I thought I heard like 1900 when, twice. So I was like, why is it called 1664? But that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, they were founded back then when mm-hmm. when it was the Holy Roman Empire, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, but That's then it went dude. through a lot of different changes through the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with like his sons, you know, passing it down. Then World War Two happened. It was <laughs> a lot of different things were happening to this brewery. Somehow it stayed up. And they made their famous Cronenberg 1664, which is a pale lager that I'm drinking right now. It's at 5.5%. Um, has small amounts of this Stristel Palt Hop. And was made with malt as well, which goes into their taste because when I was drinking it, I it was a very interesting mix of sweet malt and bitterness. It was like kind of like going back and forth with it. And both flavor, both like profiles weren't really up your face. It was very much a light sensation in your mouth. Where like, you know, it, it, some sips would be more sweet. Other sips would be more bitter. But it was very well balanced, I would say, in, in this beer. So I almost want to give it... I almost want to give it an 8, actually. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of want to give it an eight. Um, I'll see. I might, I might end up revising it because that was the first beer. But yeah, I mean, I, maybe it was. But I don't know. It's just definitely more intricate than what I thought it was gonna be. You know, um, like mm-hmm. it was like the smell of it felt like a normal beer, but it's just when you taste of it, it's it's very much sweet and bitter, and like in a really good balance. So. I, I really like it. I really like this. So I stick to my eight. I'll do eight. Shit. Uh, what's that? What's a Franz soccer team? PSG. Paris Saint Germain. All right. I'll do eight PSGs. Uh, <laughs> four for them. Um, but yeah, that's kind of crazy. So yeah, we'll mm. finishing up that. I'll continue to drink the BS Saigon. Yeah. So, where current yeah, events since, happening? Since now? Current events. There's been uh, a lot of stuff popping off. Yeah, it's kind of like it, it. It takes time to like realize, like, man, the world is kind of crazy. You know, it's just yeah. things are always happening. Things are always popping up in Twitter. But thing, you know. Yeah, I deleted Twitter. I think I said that before, but I do not. I'm not as well caught up on current events because I'm not on Twitter. But I would see a bunch of stuff popping up on the trending tab, but yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, uh, but yeah, so we you brought it up to my attention this this story um about how, what what's his name? It's like Kaisena. 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 Yeah. Okay, so what so what ended up happening with with this incident? Yeah, yeah. So for I guess for people who might not know what's happening, I literally found out earlier today. Um, but apparently on the August fourth. Uh, Kai Senet, who is a Twitch streamer, slash YouTuber, slash, you know, influencer. Social media, yeah. So yeah, so, social, social media, media presence. Um, yeah. He announced that he was going to be having a giveaway in uh, somewhere in New York. I don't remember where, if it was in Times Square or something like that. But he, he basically announced that he was going to be having a giveaway. He's going to be giving away PlayStations, giving away gift cards, uh, PCs. And this is someone who is the most subscribed... Uh, person on Twitch, and he has a lot of followers. So, what ended up happening was he did that. Apparently, around seven to ten thousand people came, and they were like going around New York City and oh, Ma- pr- Manhattan. Manhattan. Okay. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. So they were they were doing that, and basically they started like rioting and being rowdy. There was like videos of like people jumping on cars, breaking windows. Yep. And it was just it was a, a whole mess. And it ended up with him getting arrested, pretty much. And Union he was arrested Square. for like Union Square, thing. that's where it was. Yeah. Times Square? No, Union Square. 
Union Square? Damn. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, I mean, the thing with this is just... I have said it before, parasocial relationships, or, like, people who go... Because this guy's 21, too, by the way, right? Yeah, he's a young buck. Yeah, he... And I think, I believe, seven people were hurt. And six... Well, 66 were arrested because of the riot, but... Mm -hmm. um, He was charged with inciting to riot and unlawful assembly. And... Which I think he could easily have gotten a way harsher charge if people actually die with his rights and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. It thinks it could be. And I don't know. I, I say it's, it's great for him to like have all this following, but I feel like he just, I don't know, went to his head. And I think he, he, it was poor planning, right? Of doing this giveaway without really having much in planning of it or like, I don't know, safety. Because, I don't know, there's many people, because he has 20, what, how many followers? Like, millions of people? Uh, so I think he has, like, 3.1 subs on YouTube, and 6 million followers on Twitch. But I think he yes. has, like, I think over 180,000 subs, which is a lot. I don't know if, how much he's, he still has, but he, like, broke the, the stream, or the record for subs on Twitch. He has a a big influence. I think, yeah, that it just kind of comes down to like social media and like influencers having too big of a of a, I guess, of a impact and not necessarily planning it out, like you said. No, yeah, I think yes. Uh, the way it is like it 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 morphs their common sense or their. Mm -hmm. Things that feel sensible for the normal person, they, they kind of like think, "Oh, dude, I, I have this much influence. I can make a movement, or I can make change, or I can, you know, if if I tell people to move, they will move." And yeah. it's just, I've, I've they underestimate it, obviously, because they're like, and I feel like there's a sense of uncaring, you know. I don't know if it was necessarily like negligent or if like. It was intended to be that way, but like, yeah, they probably should have made it more of an organized effort than just yeah. saying like, everyone come here because, you know, there's probably a lot of people that came who just wanted to like chill and be a part of that community. But there was probably a lot of people who came and were like, I'm going to fuck shit up, you know? Yeah. And I think, I don't know. I just, I just really didn't agree with, with how blaze there are. Because like, imagine like if, if. People have died in this. He could have been charged with like manslaughter or mm -hmm. reckless endangerment, and it does. It's kind of like, where's the limit? Like, like, like. I I just hope that this. I mean, I don't know. I hope this is a wake up call for him, but I feel like it won't be, because I feel like I don't know. People take this as just because I'm. I don't know how how much he makes. I mean, I'm guessing he makes a lot. He, makes he probably a lot. just. Yeah, probably wave this off with hiring a, a good team of lawyers and that's it. And just it'll be dealt with and he's still... And you know how... The thing is, the masses like this controversial bullshit, you know? Like, the masses give in to this. Because it's, it's what made Logan Paul or Jake Paul so, so big. Because they're controversial. They're like... They make people want to... Well, I don't, I don't think that's the same. Find that. Cause I, feel I, don't like, I don't think... It, like. I think he just has to have more of an awareness of like what a following he has, because like I feel like with Logan Paul and Jake Paul, they they intentionally do controversial shit to stir stuff up, and they like for them no, all publicity is good publicity. Whereas like Kai Kai has like he's had a pretty positive impact, and you know he has his little things. Every every community is not a hundred percent like positive, but. I don't think yeah, they're the. Well, they're, it's the same for like, whereas like as the Paul brothers and, and trolls, or what about the? That was what was the name. Uh, the Red Peel people or the. Uh, well, what Matrix or Andrew Tate? Fresh, Kristen Tate. Fresh, fresh, fresh fits. I have no fresh clue. fits. Like it's like. Um, I was gonna look something up and I forgot. Ah, uh, what is name? Do you know I want to preach? Nope. No, no clue. I, no, fresh and fit. I think 
I think that's the name of their group. Was it a podcast? Fresh. Yeah. I think or, I've heard of that, but I have not watched any fit. of their content. Aren't they, yeah, like, controversial? F- Hell yeah, they're like... They're the red pill people. They're the red pill people. They're like, men stuff improvement podcasts. The truth to men on females, finances, and fitness. And all that, all that crap. They have, you know, entertain on it. They... Sneeko. Sneeko's on mm, there, too. Sneeko. You know Sneeko, That tells right? me all I need to know. Yeah, and it's like... I guess, Kai, I guess since you know, Kaisena is not really like that. I guess, is that what you're telling me? Yeah, I don't think... So, I don't think... He's not... He's a pretty, like, positive, like... Role model, I feel, because, like, I think the biggest thing about him was, like, for the most part, all the people who are super famous and, like, YouTubers and all are usually pretty white. Like, not pretty white. They're, like, white. They're just Caucasian or they're just white presenting. Yeah. But he was, like, one of the first people of color that was doing that. So that that whole, that brings that whole, like, you know, people seeing people who are famous and successful that look like them. So I feel like that's that's something that's, like, really different about him. And he's really charismatic and he's he's... Seems to be like not like going crazy, but I don't know. I, I guess so he, you he doesn't just... like intend it, to me. Like it just strikes that he doesn't. He's not like a. He doesn't aim to go out and do that. That's not like his style of content, you know. Okay. I don't okay. know. I really haven't watched much though, so I can't. I can't talk too much about that. No, but I, f- I think it is that gives me a better idea. At least, yeah. at least that gives me a better idea that it's not. He, it really was for planning, and he, he doesn't really thrive on this, you know? Right? Like it, yeah. it, it really is. Yeah, it's just rough. Messy situations. Yeah, I mean, thank, thank, thank God or thank anything that, that people didn't die. You know? Yeah. Because this would have been painted this would have been painted way different brush mm-hmm. if someone died because of the actions of a 21-year-old. And, and I don't know who... Does he have a team? Does he have like a? Yeah, he has like a group team. Well, like he has he has a marketing group and all that too. But like, he has like a like you know how there's like side men and like yeah. like groups of people who like are part of like the same organization. I guess he has like his own like org. It's called AMP. AMP, right? Yeah, and it means three, possible three, supposedly. Which is good because it is a lot of I I do because the way you talk about it. I have hope that this is, you know, a one thing event. He was poor planning. He's, you know, because it just, I don't know. It just sounded to me like something that could be done by something like the the, the Paul brothers, Fresh and Fit, mm-hmm. just to literally just, just living off of cause, controversy. Like, yeah, creating chaos. Beer and we're back three. with beer number three. Bing, 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 bing. Bing, 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 bing. What? So why are you having for beer room number three, Stout? I'm having Almaz- Almanza. Almanza. It is a Lebanese Pilsner beer. Pilsner, okay. I'm really visiting the Middle East, I believe. It's the next area. Is it good? Oh my gosh, shit. I just realized that I, I have to use my tool to, I don't know, open this crap. Fosters. Wait, wait. I'm gonna open mine. Go for it. Okay, go for it. I'm ready. Boom. Three, two, one. You said go for it. I went for it. What do you mean? I did it. Okay, I did too. All right, first sip. Clink. Uh, uh. Is that kind of beer? No. Ooh, that fucking is weird in a good way. It is weird in a bad way. So I'll, I'll 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 I'm a I'm gonna write my thoughts on a notepad, and we'll come back yep. to it because we had to talk about the two beers that we just had. Let's yeah, let's do it. Uh, for me, I had the ba- Bia Saigon. Um, it was like from from Vietnamese, and it's kind of mm-hmm. interesting. It's like I was I looked up their website, and dude, they have like the most intricate website for a beer company I've ever had seen. To be honest. They, there's a leading brand in name in Vietnam in, in Vietnam, with about one hundred and forty years of developing. It was it's kind of crazy. Um, 
the 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 Pia Saigon export is a four point nine alcohol percentage with a twelve ounce bottle, and it apparently what it, what they say is the most popular beer in Vietnam. This okay. actual the, the export one, and it has you know a traditional, charming, natural, but with a liberal flavor, and that, all that says is very much paha. <laughs> But you know, it, it just feels like very much marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, they say the ingredients is water, malt, barley, cereal, and hops. Which interesting. I don't, see, I don't know so why you said cereal. I thought I thought you meant that was some of the the taste that you got for the beers that I was looking at. My beer said that like you get like cereal mar- malt or like barley. I don't know. I don't know. They fucking put cereal in that shit. Would they put some frosted flakes in that bitch? Yeah, I guess because it's, it's another set of grains, right? The, yeah. The add along with like the the barley and the yeast, maybe. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. And you know, it it, it it was an interesting flavor. It was like very dark, or it felt very heavy, or not heavy. It felt. I think I drank it so fast, actually. Like, uh, I drank it. Wait, yeah, I, I have some more. So I'm gonna drink the last bit. Uh, sip on that bitty I should not have sip. done that I should not yeah, have done that it was warm it, at this point yeah <laughs> mm, the, the, that's the foam at the bottom that you're drinking the warm foam Oof, that's uh, not good. That was, well, don't, don't like, let that influence your, your taste on, or your opinion on the beer because that's no that's like, but it was rough I should I actually liked it but at the same time it felt very bland in some sense mm-hmm like it didn't feel like really it was that big of tasting. It was not very memorable in some ways. Yeah, it, I agree with yeah. that for my as well. It was pretty toasted though. It's very. It felt dark, but you know, despite only being four point nine, it felt like heavy. And I guess the gr- it has some grainy taste to it that I probably starts from all that grain that they use with cereal. <laughs> Um, maybe there's a hint of fruit, maybe, but for me, I didn't like as much as I like the sixty sixty four. I'm probably gonna give it. Shit, what's a Vietnamese thing? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna look up Vietnam, and then see what the first. Ban me pho. Oh pho. Yeah pho. Yo, okay. I'll give it six faux soups out of ten. Let's go. I like that. I I think, but but it felt too light. It felt too. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Yeah, Not that eye catching. I like the sixty six four for his sweet and bitter blend. That that was a really nice balance. But this one's just more light beer. I feel like. I feel. I feel. Go for it. So for me. Don't. I had the Sing Tao, Sing Tao, I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but um, there was the Chinese beer, uh, little fun facts on it. So apparently um, in 2016, Sing Tao was the second most consumed beer globally and reached a 2.8 share of the global beer market, which is crazy because I've never heard of this beer. Um, and in terms of China, it's China's second largest brewery um, and it accounts for 15% of the domestic market share. And also accounts for half of China's national beer exports. So I guess a lot of people who leave China really like this beer and um, just buy it. Or they just take it with them or like... No, ex- or, I mean, I'm assuming exports like here, and import. Man, that's crazy. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. But what did it taste like? Um, It was very inoffensive. Like it was, <laughs> it was like easy that. to sip. I think this one tasted more like a Heineken than this the second one. So apparently, um, this beer uh, was founded in 1903 by German settlers. So I'm not sure if this is like a true, ger- like two true Chinese like beer, because I feel like the damn Germans are everywhere in the beer like world. I think the thing mm. is everyone learns it from the Germans or mm. Belgium and stuff like that. So mm. it's like they're just they're really. Cause, 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 cause that was kind of like similar to the or origins of the Sapporos, mm-hmm. how the guy went to Germany to learn about beer brewing. They mm-hmm. came back through it. I mean, I like that story a bit more than what you said. Where like, it the is German people went there. It's like it was like a Chinese person. Yeah. 
Because I feel like in that sense, you probably got some of the German taste, but you also got some of the, the you know, Japanese taste because he was Japanese. But for this one, this, man, this is just straight German people who came there. Ciao. That's but crazy. It was pretty solid. This one tasted a lot more like a Heineken. I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping, but... I mean, not. It was solid. Um, I think since it was so inoffensive, not really that memorable, I'm going to give it a 5.5. 5.5 TikToks out of 10. TikToks? Yeah, TikTok is uh, Chinese, my guy. <laughs> Easy clap. No, I knew that. But at the same time, like, I didn't make this connection at first. I, that was a genuine, like, TikTok. <laughs> but yeah. then I remembered. Oh, yeah. Well, I think it apparently is for this one, it's like... I think Asian style lager or Asian style beers in general usually have more rice in them. I think it says that it has hops, barley, rice, and pure spring water. Yeah. Oh, I, I, it's, I, it's pronounced Qingdao. Qingdao. I said that completely fucking wrong. I'm so sorry. So sorry for our Chinese beers. <laughs> or for our. I was looking at that. For popular, popular Chinese brands, there's Blue Ribbon, which is making me think of fucking Dragon Ball. Why? Oh, because red, red ribbon. ribbon. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. It's taking me a while. There's a lot of beers. But yeah, but yeah. Five point <laughs> five. Five point five out of ten. Unoffensive, okay. chilling. So, kind of following the the pop culture trend, they didn't you? You were telling me something about uh, so, something that was happening in current events. So something that is like even more controversial stuff, I guess, with the news. And I have to say, um. I really don't know a lot of the some of the a lot of the facts. It's a lot of it, like you know, from things that are coming up, right? And I know some of our viewers really like Lizzo, and but I think a week before there have been allegations made to Lizzo as a performer, and that like apparently three of her former dancers went public. Um, that show that that like they're saying that the the conditions working for Lisa was very uh, what should we call it strenuous like very offensive or like a lot some of them were fat shame for gaining weight uh, and then apparently on one of the world tours they went to some clubs some strip clubs so, what. No, some uh, strip clubs. Yeah, right. Like some sexual clubs. Or not sexual. Well, like perfor- where the performers were showing stuff. And and alle- allegedly, they were forced to grab the titties of one of the performers. by. I, I read some, some crazy shit. I read that they, they were forced what? to like eat bananas out of the, <laughs> the people and shit. So... I heard, yeah, that was another. I didn't want to say it because it's like it's a very curt fix to say, but yeah, yeah, it's there. There were that's some crazy stuff. If that's true, that's wild. It is. It if it's true, because right now it is allegation, but it's it's just tough. The thing is with this, it's like it really was a to come out of left field because Lisa is someone who proposed yeah, was body, a big promoting body of positivity and all that body possibility. Sexuality, positivity, you know, accepting and stuff like that, which is kind of crazy to me that like, then he, sh- she or her maybe group or I don't know, I don't know her like managerial goes to fat shame or dancers, which is tough because while I was listening to so, some people talking about the dancer, it's like the dancer industry or you know if you're a dancer you're the bottom of the tone pole in a lot of these performances you know Mm -hmm. it's like it it sucks it's it's like you are dancing your body way away or like i don't know it's like it's very strenuous exercise Mm -hmm. to you're gonna be the best of the best yeah you have to be the best of the best you might not even be be on it and people apparently do some really crazy stuff as dancers like they're forced to it's like a dirty business Apparently. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's kind of tough because like, you really expect Lisa to do it, and I guess I don't know. Whatever comes with the allegations, like you know, it's like I'm. I just in some way that I, she says she's the nicest, right? Calling them unbelievable boys, but it's like I don't know because there have been people who lied to get clout, but it's just 
That's why I hate the ambiguous of things. Yeah, you know? it's like yeah. I feel like usually for the first like. I feel like it's always better to be on the accuser side because for the most part usually when they accuse you know it's m more 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 likely than not it's true it's, it's like yeah. give like you know don't always deny the victims right or like mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's yeah, some, it's, yeah go for it's it it's like the victim shaming and all that so like that's my first impulse but like i have no context on this so i really can't put much of an opinion on it because I, I think what, I, what like, I read was fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, what the uh, like allegations were is like the banana thing, touch. Because the thing is the the thing about fat shaming is like uh, I don't know. I think I almost would believe it a bit more if the if the dancers were not plus size. I guess because it's it's like I don't know. It it, it is a thing that's tough to talk about. But yeah. all I have to say is like. I do agree with like let's try to give the benefit of the doubt for the you know the people who are being brave to do these allegations, mm -hmm. right? See what happens when the evidence comes, right? And and then decide after. Cuz cuz if we don't do that, then we really don't give a lot of platform for people coming out cuz it's like cuz nobody is I guess this there's something that Nobody, it's not like nobody's safe, but nobody is absolved of bad things, right? Or, li or like, we, we idolize these people who are proponents for good things, but then something comes out and about them, that like they did. And even if the allegations are just true, but it's one of those things like, don't put your heroes on pedestals, don't, they're human, they're like... Yeah, they're just they're like just, us. They're like they're, they're just like you, but with a heightened sense of superiority or like success, more money, more money, more attention. They're not doing a lot of really crazy stuff, and it's just I don't know. I think that because there are times where I don't know because because I feel like a lot of there's some straight people who feel similarly when talk to with um lgbt people or not that the lgbt people are like preying on them or like or like saying or like trying to get with them but more like they're challenging their sexuality sometimes i feel like i've, I've seen it with some of the they're like or like are you sure you're you're straight how have you even tested it let's you know let's do a test you know blah, blah, blah. so there's a i think negative part i feel like there is with you know, I don't know LGBT, but I I think because it's something because I think that's something that happened with in this place with Lisa where like allegedly she forced them to touch the titties of dancers of, of the performers and stuff like that mm -hmm. when they were not comfortable to do that, and I don't know maybe that's a sexual thing or maybe there was, it wasn't a sexual thing but I don't know I it's tough it's tough but I just want to say. Give the benefit of the doubt to the victims. See where this goes, and you know, we'll see what happens, man. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of tough. Some of some of this. This is why maybe we're not a those reaction YouTubers. Yeah, we're more of a you know let's let's get drunk and talk about life. <laughs> yeah, I feel like with like these things, like you have to know so much nuance and so much like of the the details that you probably won't know. Whereas like yeah. I could say, oh, she got accused of this. You know, she's a shitty person, but I don't really know what happened, and I don't really know like all of the details that I need to know to be able to like be like you're in the wrong. You know, I just no. hope that you know everyone who was affected by it. It's it's like it's okay. It's the thing, the thing is that the the only other thing that sucks about this whole thing is that for the dancers that are making these allegations, right? They they have to win. If not, their careers are gonna be destroyed. You know, they're going to be like, or even like you know, they they they're not gonna be able to find any jobs from now on because because the the dancing industry is such cutthroat. Where, because these these are plus size dancers, right? 
And I don't know. It's I know it's tough as a plus size dancer to find jobs. And yeah, I feel like that's like the catch twenty two too, though, because like if you come out and you say this, then like I feel like people are gonna be like, oh, I don't want to hire them because they were involved in this. You know, it just kind of like already limits your your opportunities even more. So it sucks. So hope that everyone that was involved comes out okay. Except for Lizzo. If Lizzo <laughs> was was at fault, then that's on her. Yeah, it, it's like yeah. The thing the thing I hate about this stuff when when things come out about people who are more on the left leaning side of things, right? Of uh, the incels to the white people or the red peel people come out as like, see, the people you believe in are pieces of shits too, and that's what I think I hate. It's like. It's something that happens with Ember Heard, or like they they use these examples to like, I don't know, feel justified about being women hating or women not caring. You know? Yeah, I just feel like that's the problem with like everything though, because like, yeah, that's the thing I really hate about this situation because it's like, I I the left side people who figures who represent who are the models role models right they. Need, like, please, be good. Don't, don't be bad. Because that you'll do more damage to not just you, but to the other people who look up to you, who, you know, who are like you, but not famous or you know successful. Where I don't know, they they'll get more damage from you. Know, I feel like I don't know. It's kind of tough. <laughs> like, yeah. There's this um Twitter. It's like, uh, hashtag Lizzo injured while dancing on stage, slipped on a banana peel. Damn, savage. <laughs> I think I think comedy is good. It just let's not make too make too much fun of it. But yeah, Twitter is just a cesspool of you know. All right, all right, all right. Beer number four. Yes, sir. What are you sipping on? I'm my fourth one. We're taking a trip down to uh, Caribbeans in Haiti, and with a beer called Prestige. Nice. Oh my gosh, it smells like weed. Oh snap! That's funny. <laughs> that's that's funny. <laughs> what were you? I am drinking an Ethiopian beer called Balia from Harar Beer Factory in Ethiopia. Ethiopian beer. Now we're going to Africa. Although this is brewed in Holland. Is Holland... Holland is outside of Haiti? Holland. Ethiopian beer. Let's crack that bitty open! Alright, cheers, man. Cheers. I think this is a Pilsner? Nope, it's a lager. I'm tripping. Man, this is this is the, the lager episode. I've had, like, all lagers. Yeah. And the thing we're, we're we're just talking about it, like if we feel like the ones that make over to the states that are not Belgium or European, and most like you, Ger- Germany, Belgium, Netherlands, they're probably are their lager variants. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. that's that's the most like the Bud Lies, uh, you know, American beer. So it's like uh, I feel like that's why they make it over to the to, to the states yes um but yeah we'll talk about the third beer though that we had uh this well you want to start with yours and yeah. leave the this one for <laughs> yeah so i had a, an almanza mazam almanza a lebanese yeah. beer it tasted like a heineken as well this is the fucking episodes of heineken's <laughs> um funny. not really that memorable i think i like the the chinese one a little bit more so it was pretty light easy to drink which is nice but i don't think i would order that again um so i think i'm gonna give it a 4.5 because it was just a little bit less i liked it a little bit less than the chinese one so 4.5 lebanese flags out of 10 out of 10 yeah Holy shit, okay. Ah, uh, that's funny. Wait, that's 4.5 uh, out, of ten, out of 5? No, yeah. 
<laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> you never know what with, with his ratings, but we'll see. But yeah, okay, so for me, oh my god, it is also owned by Heineken. Yeah, Heineken apparently owns all these like little breweries in other places. Or or like they have shares a lot of Yeah. Them. But yeah, for me, I was drinking the Foster's Lager, which was which it says in the can they were founded in Australia. But in reality, Stout. There's like an interesting, or there's a, even another story to it. Where like it was created by these two American brothers, William M. and Ralph R. Foster, who arrived in Melbourne, Australia, Melbourne. in 1886, and they began brewing the lager. And two years later, but then soon after that, the brothers left. And they sold their company, I don't know, in Australia. Or, like, and it just became, like, a whole, a company just kept moving, booming ownership between the century until it landed in a UK, you know, license. And it was, like, and it's very much, apparently, oh, yeah, it was owned, it is owned by, that's actually funny, it's owned by the International Brewing Group, Asahi Group Holdings. Actually, yeah. and uh, Asahi, Asahi, Asahi. It's a Japanese brewing company. <laughs> or the, oh, the, shit, really? Yeah, they're owned interna- by the International Brewing Group. And it's brewed on under license in numbers of countries, which is biggest market, the UK instead of the Australia. Where the European rights to the brand are owned by Heineken International, and yeah, while it is the largest selling Australian asterisk beer, it is not as popular or and relatively rare compared with other beers in Australia. Big and, one, yeah, it's a big one. It, I was what I was I was going through the research stout, and there's a TikTok of this Aussie say. If you ever tell me uh, if what a Foster's beer tastes like, you need to get out or I beat you up. <laughs> and because yeah. it, it is a fake, uh, in some ways, it is a fake Australian beer because the Aussies don't drink it. Only the British people drink it. And then, you know, and in turn us or the United States people. And it's kind of crazy because... Because you, uh, it was hard to find Australian beer, and this is the only one I found in my beer, you know, store. It's just kind of crazy, and it just, yeah, like let's not order Foster's beers when we go to Australia, okay, Stout? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna roast it if we do that. We do so, and I agree because I when I tasted it, you know what it tastes like? It tasted like Budweiser to me. I think that's what the beer was. Otherwise, are interesting. It felt like a really dirty, cheap, like dark bitter. That just was just like that would that was light as well. Like it was like a dark bitter that's light, you know. Which is like, and it it just they're trying to be more nuanced than just light beer, but it's really just I don't know, just. This feels dirty whenever I taste this with Budweiser, but I will probably give this a three. Damn. That's yeah, low. three. Yeah, three Crocodile Dundees. You know, out That's of that. Right. Yeah, because I really don't like it. I really don't like it. I'd rather not taste this. And cause it just feels cheap. It just feels. I don't know, like a cheap bitterness. I I would rather eat drink an IPA over this one. Damn, that's a bold claim. Yeah, it, it just it's like it really is a beer that that feels like nationalism or not nationalism. What's it called? Col- colonialism, right? Colonial, okay. Colonialism, Col- no colonial. That's mm-hmm. the way you say, it, but like. It literally is people who are out of the country come in, make this beer, and they fuck off, and then they live the issue there. And and I don't know, it, 
in some ways that beer this beer represents that but yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's been fun though okay, trying new beers this is fun this, this episode's been fun fuck uh. dude this Haiti one does taste like hate weed I feel like ooh interesting it's kind of crazy it's funny have you ever tasted weed have I ever tasted weed I tasted the Space Dust IPAs. I uh, know the <laughs> what's it called? I I had a friend in Bank Dust. That's what it's called. Sorry, Bank Dust. I had a friend who uh, we went to California, and they bought a lot of weed to 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 smoke, and and then in the last day when we're going back to Phoenix, they were like. We need to finish this because we, we, we they didn't want to get caught with the the weed stuff crossing the you know the state border. He goes to eat it, eat the weed. Bruh. <laughs> it's like mm, this is, tastes like candy. <laughs> mm, Burr, that's tough. Cause it, it really was just it. We were literally twenty two. 20 people going to this one Airbnb. Or maybe less than 20 people. Less than 20 people. But you really got a big group. And like half of the people were would smoke weed. And they went um went crazy on the dispensaries. And it's just like, there you go. And they didn't finish enough. We we ended up also not going over a check, you know? Mm-hmm. So so he, he ate that we for nothing. That's tough. <laughs> I, I, I don't think you get any effects by eating it. Or like, I'm sure it's not as strong. I don't know. Yeah, or I don't know. It, it, like, it felt, it, it didn't seem like it really did much. I like eating edibles. I don't know how the, I don't know. Maybe it takes longer to digest it when it's like all plant form. Yeah. Yeah, but can you do if well, well, ah, uh, you want you think you're ready to rate this, this the new beer? Yeah, I'm already almost done with that video. I'm too, I'm too quick with it. Shit, I'm on. I'm well, you, you, you give it there. I'll chug this one, bro. This dude. So, this was uh, the Walia Lager. I feel like both this one and the Almanza had like light beer taste to it, but it also kind of had like the the de- the deepness of like a stout like the first the Almanza had a little bit of a sweetness and this one just has like more of a depth of flavor I'm not sure okay I think depth for this flavor. one mm, I think I'm gonna have to give it a six point five I liked it more than the Sing Sao and the Almana and but I didn't like it as much as the Estrella de Galicia it was smooth. It was easy to drink, but I don't know if I'd order it again. I got away. Now you want it? Why that? If I see it in Ethiopia, maybe I'll order it there, but I'm going to give it a 6.5. The weekend's out of 10. Fun fact, the weekend yeah. was born to Ethiopian parents. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. I think I was not expecting that. Yes, sir. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Holy crap. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What about you? What about you? So for me, I would say it's an interesting taste to it. Wait. It's very crisp. It's, it's like, it feels like a course banquet almost. <laughs> so, but well, to, but in, the, in the nicest way possible, I actually do like it. I think it's like the bottle is shaped like a course banquet, you know? That I don't know why you, you know that type of bottle is like I do not I don't know what a course banquet is, but I'm assuming it's a course beer. It's like it's kinda of crazy. It's like it's hoppy, it's like very light and lager and in malt. Sounds interesting. It's it's not sweet. It's more crisp. I feel like I think I would give it a good what did I give Big Saigon? I got five. Okay. I don't know. I'll chief. give this. Hmm. Do I like it more? No. 
I'll give it a five. I, I give it another five. Numero five. cinco. Numero cinco. I'll give it a five. Let's see. Haitian artists. <laughs> artists. Let's see. Uh, uh, Haitian. What do you know about ha- ha- Haiti? They speak Creole, no? Oh, wait. No way, so Sadan is an Asian person. No way. Hmm. That's not true, right? No. I just realized that you say Haitian and Asian very similarly. Haitian. A- <laughs> ha- what? Haitian, Asian. Same thing, Probably bro. Not. Same thing. No, it's not. Or nothing different. Okay, maybe. Okay, the, the, a- Haitian, Asian. Haitian, Asian. Asian. Because when I say Asian, um, let me see. Was I'm pretty sure. No, I thought Russia was born to Asia. <laughs> what What is Haiti known for? Let me see. I'm not sure. Mm. Are you a scrub? Don't even have your 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 Haiti fun facts ready. No, I I'll ha- I'll I'll get five. Haiti dancers out of ten. I'll I'll, I'll get something like that. Alrighty, well, we'll see. All right. Well, that marks off the end of the episode. Thank you so much for joining us on the world yes, tour. Sir, yes, sir. As we we're tasting different beers for us, and if you like it, like and subscribe. Comment down below any any like new beers you guys want us to try. You know, because like we're always, we're always putting our livers in line for you guys. So, <laughs> so we always do that for you guys. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for watching. All right, Style Logger signing off. Catch you on the next one.